Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for um, the opportunity, all the folks at, at Better Business Bureau. Um, I would love this to be a conversation. I don't, I hate Zoom calls and I am Zoomed out. So it, please interrupt me at will. I would appreciate it if you do. I apologize for the where I am right now, but my air conditioning is out and the three dogs and the workers are in the house banging around. So I figured this was easier. So if it's distracting, I apologize. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, social media and we're going to talk about primarily Facebook and LinkedIn. But if you have questions on either of those or any of the other ones that you are aware of, please let me know because I want to be able to answer your questions, not just give you my information. Um, so we're going to start talking a little bit about LinkedIn um, and the ways that you can promote yourself and your business on LinkedIn. Um, both LinkedIn and Facebook are the cornerstones of social media um, for the business world today. So if you use these tools to market your business, you're going to extend, extend your reach and extend your brand. Um, just a couple of minor things about LinkedIn. Um, make sure that your profile is complete. Have a good headshot. Um, the picture of you with the big fish is probably not a great headshot. Let's try and keep it a little professional. Um, remember to put in your cover image. Whoops, sorry. I don't do this very often. Um, make sure that you fill out your cover image. That's the image above my um, profile photo. And make sure that you've got it branded properly so your logo isn't cut off behind your head. Um, the area below my name where many people put in their title is actually to be used to put in the keyword phrases that people would look for you. So for example, they're not gonna go to LinkedIn and type in president of digital agency A, they're gonna look for a digital marketing expert. So make sure that those keywords are in your profile. Um, complete your profile. Make sure that all the sections are filled out. If you don't have a complete profile, it looks like you don't care enough to finish that up for people. Um, there's some basics. We'll, we'll get into some more specifics as we go on. Um, you can do multiple things on LinkedIn. You have your personal page, you have your business page, and then you have some advertising. Um, these three different levels of service will achieve different things for you. And we'll talk about each one of them in you know a little bit more so um let's go to your per personal profile update your personal profile frequently we post to ours daily um if you notice on any of my posts they usually contain a headline a link an image and hashtags um, hashtags are very important particularly in linkedin and they will suggest hashtags to you. If you don't know what a hashtag is, we can talk about that here now. Any any takers on hashtags? I can't see anybody, so I'm just hoping Clay will tell me if there's a question about it. Okay. Um, tell me so, more about hashtags. Okay. All right. That's a great softball. I appreciate it. So. A hashtag is a way for people to find out about a particular topic. If you go to LinkedIn and you search by a particular hashtag, you will get every post that has to do with that particular hashtag. So a few weeks ago, um, during the unrest, you'll, you may have noticed people saying, please don't use the Black Lives Matter hashtag. That was not out of disrespect for Black Lives Matter. It was because people were using the hashtag indiscriminately and it was it was crushing their message within the, the movement. So 
when you're using a hashtag, be conscious of what you're doing with it because you are taking up some valuable real estate with that hashtag. Um, use a hashtag that makes sense. Um, my stepdaughter used to use the hashtag nom 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 on Instagram. Well, that meant absolutely nothing eight years ago, but now if you go to Instagram and type in nom nom nom, you're gonna get some great recipes from some great restaurants and people. So just, and use between three and five. You don't need to use 20. If you're on Instagram, you need to use 13. But on LinkedIn, it's a, it's a shorter number. Um, again, continue to update your personal profile. Make sure that you're authentic. Bring in your personality. Um, you'll see that my branding is very consistent. You know, we've got our business logo in the bottom right-hand corner of all of the um, posts we've got the our business colors in the post it's it's branded um as you're filling in your personal profile use those keyword phrases within the summary within the skill sets make sure that you're when you're filling out the summary you're speaking first person this is about you it's not a third person platform this is you talking to people so make sure to use keyword phrases make sure to use words that people will look for when they're looking for you and on the business whoops sorry on the business page same thing make sure you've got your business logo make sure you've got your cover photo make sure you filled out all of the tabs on the right hand side with information about your business optimize your page for search a well-optimized company page will help you gain visibility among people that are searching for the products and services that you sell um, not only should you push your own content to this page but and again same thing with your your personal page you should share content of other people's pages so i posted something yesterday about one of my clients and somebody that we have in common shared my post tagged me tagged the person that i had posted about so now we're amplifying everybody's message um incorporate keyword phrases include them in your about us tab the about tab here on this linkedin is the most important. Um, the more frequently you share content of others, the higher, the more frequently you share your content and people follow your content, the higher your page is gonna appear in search. So make sure you've got really good quality content other than self-promotion. Um, it's definitely an 80-20 rule here. 80% of the time you should be sharing useful information 20 percent you can be a little promotional but don't come across as salesy um linkedin in particular do not like salesy salesy messages um they want fresh ideas they want um, you to show your thought leadership in your field they want to know that you're an expert um, one of the things that is highly highly popular right now is video um, creating short video snippets is a very authentic way to get your message across to people it also creates engagement 98 percent or i'm sorry 93 percent of people are more inclined to engage with video content than any other form of content um there is also am i going too fast are we still good except i don't know how to use um you can purchase advertising on linkedin um it is a very very effective way of getting your brand message across um, these, the sponsored content either shows up in 
people's news feeds. It shows up in groups. Uh, there's a variety of places that sponsored content can show up. Um, the, the cost per click is fairly high in LinkedIn, but it's because it's a highly engaged audience. Um, when you're developing content through this, through their social, um, through their sponsored ads, make sure you're writing headlines under 150 characters and keeping the descriptions under 70 characters. Embed larger images or video rather than small um, thumbnails and use clear calls to action. You want to know, you want them to know what you're asking them to do. Is it purchase? Is it click? Is it read more? Is it buy a ticket? You know, give them the call to action. If you don't tell them, they're not going to know what you want them to do. We good so far? Questions? Okay. Um, in order to determine if your work on LinkedIn is effective, they've got an analytics program right in there that you can see what po posts are being engaged with, whether they're being liked, commented, or shared. You want to look at that information and use it to your best advantage because if you're pushing out content that nobody cares about, stop wasting your time and figure out what is resonating with people and try and push more content like that. Um, Jim Reese is an excellent LinkedIn person. He he is a rock star. Um, there's a couple of standout folks. I um, Ozzy from Remsource is amazing particularly with video. So, you know, if you want some good examples, take a look at those two people's platform profiles. They do a phenomenal job getting their message across. Any questions on LinkedIn? Okay, let's see if I can do this right this time. So, now we're going to go to Facebook. And there's several different ways we can use Facebook. Again, like LinkedIn, you've got your personal profile, you've got your business profile, and you've got ads. You need to figure out what your goal is. So for example, a restaurant may use both, both a profile, personal profile and a business profile to get their message across because people relate to restaurant owners. They relate to people in the industry. They want to have a conversation. And so it becomes more authentic coming from their personal page than from their business page. But a law firm is probably not going to post on their personal pages. They're going to keep it to the company page. Um, so just determine what your goals are, what your message is, who your audience is. And you may be posting content in both places and that's okay, but I would be very careful using your personal page if you are political, if there's any of the, the major hot buttons, the no, no sex, no drugs, no rock and roll, <laughs> you know, you don't want that on your personal page if you're going to promote your business page there. Um, Facebook is also more of a B2C kind of platform you're going to see restaurants clothing makeup it's not going to be heavily b2b um linkedin is more of a b2b platform um, and in addition to the goal i would have and this goes for both linkedin and facebook have a strategy don't just post for the sake of posting um, make sure that the information is telling your brand story make sure that you're doing it consistently that the that the voice is consistent with your voice um again here you want to make sure that you're growing your audience that you're engaging your audience that you're growing your business's visibility um you want people to post comments you want people to share experiences you can include things like coupons or specials but try and draw people into the page more than anything else. Um, same thing here, keep your profile updated with new information. 
and definitely make sure that your business page is a business page, not a page that was set up as a personal page and you use it as a business page. Facebook has been taking them down um, frequently. So make sure that you, if you have an old personal page use it, that you're using as a business page, you start a new business page account and try and migrate all of those followers over to that business page. Um, we actually, we actually had a, a question come in, Gina. It's a good one from Peggy. <clears throat> She's asking on Facebook, how can you promote a live event and how can you engage the audience during the event? Um, and how how do you get the audience members to join the broadcast? So I saw a lot of thanks, Clay. I saw a lot of this um, during COVID in Key West. All of the all of the bars and restaurants were shut down, and all of the musicians went to Facebook Live with their virtual tip jars, and they played Facebook Live. Um, there's a couple things you can do post about the event leading up to it so that people have it in their calendar, create an event within Facebook so that it is an actual event event, and you can put some advertising dollars on it. Um, there is a platform called Facebook local that if, it, if you add your event to that, it'll show up in people's smartphones and it will suggest. So if you like musician A in Key West, it's gonna suggest musician B, C, and D. Um, the advertising in Facebook is very inexpensive and I'm actually getting to something we're gonna talk about next anyhow, so we can go right there. Um, Facebook, ah, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at this. Facebook ads are a very effective way to get your posts seen by people who know you as well as people who don't know you. Um, within the Ads Manager platform, you can set up ads for Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. Um, there's some rules around me Messenger, which I can get into, but are a little complicated. Um, but you set, within Ads Manager, you set up ads, you set up campaigns, you set up ad sets. You can manage and modify your budgets. You can target specific audiences. So if you want certain people to see those ads, you can say, hey, Facebook, I want to target people between 35 and 65 who like music and have traveled to Key West and enjoy fireball I'm, I'm just making it up um, the other thing you can do within uh, Facebook which I personally think is amazing is if you have an email list already set up you can load that list into Facebook and it will crowdsource people like that list so if you're a restaurant and these are all of your the people that have eaten at your restaurant over the past year, they're gonna go out and they're gonna push these ads to those people as well as people just like them. Angie and I both like Capitol Grill. We're gonna see ads from the other steak, major steakhouses and, and five-star dining in the area because they already have that information about us. Um, and then, Particularly with the with the ads, you want to monitor your campaign performance. You want to make sure you're looking at what is working and what is not working. Same thing. Do some A/B testing. Um, have the same message but two different images. Have two different messages but the same image. See what works with people. See what calls to action with that resonate with people. Um, Within, I'm going really fast, I feel like. That's all the caffeine talking, so slow me down if you need me to. Um, within the Ads Manager, you've got a couple of different campaign types. You've got an awareness campaign, a consideration campaign, and a conversion campaign. 
Um, awareness campaigns generate knowledge and interest about your product or service. So that's where the, the Facebook Live, maybe uh, those types of campaigns to get people on the on the lives. Consideration campaigns allow people to engage with your um, business, click on specific links for more information and keep products and services top of mind. So that's your your sales message, so to speak. And then the conversion campaigns prompt audience towards a call to action, clicks to purchase, sign up for a promotion, join a webinar, whatever. The nice thing about Facebook is that it guides you through the, um, sorry, the more guys are here working on the attic. Um, it'll guide you through the campaigns. It'll ask you a series of questions. So once you have a type of campaign chosen, you can use the audience targeting capabilities that I mentioned. Um, tell people what target audiences to look, look like and expand on that. Um, with the amount of data that Facebook collects from you when you're from all of its users, you can get really, really specific and get the most out of your advertising. Um, I talked about the lookalike audiences, um, users that share similar experience to other known groups. Um, when you create a lookalike audience, you identify the initial cre criteria on your own, upload that custom list, and Facebook's going to crowdsource and identify the common qualities of those people. Um, again, with both of these, have a strategy in mind, have a plan in mind, and then be able to look at what's working, look at what's not working, and utilize that information to your best ability. Uh, particularly in the in the ad space, you don't want to be spending money crazy and it's not doing anything for you. Does that make sense? So um, I, I gave you a bunch of information. I'd like to kind of have conversations now and do some you know Q and A. Um, I, I went kind of fast again, but who's using social media and what platforms are they using? Can we can we get a, a little informal poll on that? We got a shout out from Jim, just a just a thank you. And obviously you touched on you know, you know, Jim's on LinkedIn all over. So <laughs> Yeah, Jim Jim's a rock star on LinkedIn. I I bow at the church of Jim Reese on LinkedIn. So um We have uh Peggy just submitted. Uh she's on Facebook, Insta, Twitter, LinkedIn. She's on TikTok too, and YouTube. Oh, Peggy, what kind of business are you? She provided that earlier, actually. Best fr best friends forever. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I'm with Best Friends Forever, the doggy daycare. So TikTok and YouTube are really great venues for us because it's so visual and people want to interact. Um, actually, in May, in May, we held a virtual puppy prom so that all those COVID dogs stuck at home could get dressed up and dance with their owners. And it was, it's actually very hysterical to watch. So the recording is out there on, on all the venues. And then we actually found out that some of our girls that work in our Joppa location were doing TikToks kind of secretly, and they were amazing. They would do them together while they were out watching the dogs. They would do them in the play yards. They would TikTok with the dogs, and they didn't want to show me, but when I found it, they were amazing. So my staff really kind of took over and invented that. Now we have corporate parameters, of course, but it's worked very well for us. That's awesome, Peggy. I'm super here, happy to hear you say that. There are a ton of platforms out there and that your business lends itself nicely to Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, because it is so visual. Um, but and, and conversely, there's a lot of people in this room that those platforms are not gonna make sense for. Um, you know, a law firm is probably not going to do a TikTok. Um, uh -huh. Does anybody does anybody know what TikTok is? Does everyone know what TikTok is? It's their videos, uh, people dancing. There's people 
uh, mouthing the words to other people talking. I mean, there's there's a variety of them. Um, if you want a really great TikTok to follow, J Lo is incredible. She, her, and A Rod have a absolute blast. But it's also a younger audience. It's a very young audience. It's high school kids, college kids. So if you're not appealing to that audience, that's not the right platform for you. Um, Peggy can do it because she's got puppies. Like who doesn't want to see a puppy? If you go to my Instagram feed, it's puppies, fox, not my personal, not my business, obviously. Um, it's all animals because I'm tired of the politics. So I want to make sure that if you're going to spend the time on social media, you spend the time on the proper platform for your business. I brought up Facebook and LinkedIn because most people can relate to that. The other ones can be very, very effective if it's the proper audience and it's used the right way make sense Does so, anybody else? Um, yeah i was gonna ask um dr smith i i don't know if you can um unmute or and join in uh he is in healthcare, providing home health care he has a great business up in the county and um you know so he has the complete opposite from puppies but yet to helping, you know, helping provide services to home health. So um, it would be great to, you know, how does he, uh, you know, Dr. Smith, how do you guys use it? Or Gina, how would you recommend for them? Well, let's hear what sure. Dr. Smith is using first and then I'll weigh in. Sure, so first of all, good morning and thank you for this talk. Uh, my company, we use a number of different platforms. Um, on LinkedIn, I have a, a personal page as well as a business page. Uh, we use Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram. And the type of material we post to those platforms are uh, usually some type of information that speaks to uh, an illness that the population we're treating may be dealing with or their caregiver may be dealing with. So for instance, uh, recently I posted an article to LinkedIn about um, dementia and a particular uh, symptom of dementia, which is confabulation. And so I, I talked about how that actually affected me personally uh, in this article for LinkedIn. But we also posted that to Facebook and Instagram with a picture that sort of would draw you in and just sort of hopefully pique your interest as to uh, what what we might be talking about. Sure. So with a medical, you know, in medical, you've got to obviously always be concerned about HIPAA. So you've got to be really Correct. careful with your post. Um, information about illness, information about um, support for caregivers, I think are great. Um, I would probably lighten it up at some point too, where you're doing just something very, um, like a, a, a quote, you know, or a picture of uh, somebody with a dog in a quote, because your, your subject matter tends to be pretty heavy. So I would look at lightening it up periodically um, I'm curious about Twitter, and I'll just make a, a statement about Twitter across the board. In general, unless you are a news source or you manage to develop a Twitter following very early on in, in the platform, Twitter isn't going to be a great platform for the majority of the people in this room. Twitter is, especially right now leading up to the election, the amount of noise and chatter happening on Twitter is going to drown out your message. So unless you're prepared to spend the whole day on Twitter, it, it's, it may be a waste of your time. There, I always have one or two people in the room that are very successful on Twitter. I have a therapist uh, that we work with who does very well on Twitter, but she's been tweeting since the beginning of time and eternity 
Um, Twitter's biggest benefit is going to be live audience participation. Um, so, for example, Peggy, or not Peggy, whoever asked about Facebook Live, um, you know, if people are tweeting at your event and using the, the handles and the hashtags, that's extremely helpful. But general news and information, you're really going to get lost in the chatter. Um, so, and, and because of the politics, it's just, it's over the top. Um, if you look at the platforms in terms of demographics, LinkedIn are, you know, males and females, business, probably between the ages of 25 and 65. Facebook skews a little older. They're 35 to, God, 80. My 80-year-old cousin is on there. Um, males and females. Instagram is a little bit younger and skews towards females. So you you get the 20 something college to 20 something. TikTok, Snapchat, our kids. They are young, young, young people. Um, now, the benefit there may be if you are. Um, the parent of a child and you monitor their Snapchat and their TikTok, you may be able to get some impact there with, with your work, but it's those are two tough platforms for anybody looking for people older than high school and college age kids. Um, all of these platforms have paid ad campaigns that, you, that work within their demographics but just make sure it's the right platform for your business and make sure that you're looking at the results that you're looking at what's working what's not working um i have a uh an attorney dis uh, disabilities attorney she gets average engagement on a campaign um click through rate which is the number of people that actually click on the ad versus just seeing the ad for most platforms is about 2%, which seems very low, but her Facebook engagement is, or her Facebook click-through rate is 5%. Her LinkedIn engagement is 0.25%, but she gets more clients off of LinkedIn than she does Facebook. So you not only have to look at the impressions and the click-through, but are you actually getting business from it? And what does that business look like? Does that make sense? Do we have any more questions coming up, Clay? Yeah, we had one a few minutes ago. Uh, Lois asked, she's asking a question about content. So what do you recommend for a very small business that's just, that needs an online presence without focusing on developing a lot of content? Is there a, a good platform or any recommendations for that? So there's a couple of platforms that I like. Um, Quora is one, and um, Reddit is another one where you can go out and search keyword phrases and find content relative to your business and just repurpose that content. Reddit can be a little snarky. Um, so anybody with thin skin, I don't think that I would go into a Reddit profile, but there's nothing wrong with crowdsourcing information from newspapers, from online newspapers, of course. Um, things like Apple News, I get a lot of content from Apple News. We get industry specific. So if you, you know, there's got to be dog grooming and, and doggy daycare industry pubs that you can pull information from. Just make sure that the publication that you're sourcing your information from is right. Um, Facebook is now, after much blowback from the business community, and Twitter has been, they're labeling things if it's not true. So the last thing you want to do is go crowdsource a piece of information and then have a big disclaimer that says this has not been verified or this information is false or worse yet have it have the profile taken down 
Um, the other thing with a you know small business that's trying to do this on a budget and trying to do it in a timely fashion, I would recommend using a scheduler. Um, Hootsuite is a good scheduler for most small businesses. There is a free version of it where you can load up to three social media platforms. <clears throat> and then schedule your schedule everything out for the month. So you spend a few hours once a month developing your content and your your and putting it into the scheduler, and then you're done. You you don't have to think about it every day. You don't have it doesn't have to be, oh God, now I got to go find something to put on Facebook. Um, there there are so many social media tools out there to help you. You know, I would encourage you to use them. Um, another one that I use a lot to discover content and determine um, how interested people are in content is a tool called Uber Suggest, U-B-E-R Suggest. Um, it's, it's a free tool. You can put in a keyword phrase. It'll pull all the most relevant articles related to that keyword phrase for the past 30 days. Um, I was going somewhere else with the scheduling. Oh. The other thing that we like to do and we recommend our clients do is have theme days. So Sundays are always our, our snuggly dog day. We always have an inspirational post with a cute puppy and, a, and just a warm and fuzzy message. Um, Mondays, in response to Black Lives Matter, our company has um, decided to feature and amplify minority owned businesses every Monday. So we've got minority owned business Mondays. Um, I've seen people do, you know, throwback Thursdays, another one, tip Tuesday. So um, if you if you can pull together that kind of schedule and then go out and crowdsource your content, it becomes very, very much, very easy to pull together content. But Again, I caution you, if you're not spending a lot of time on the strategy, you're not gonna get the engagement that you want. If you don't get the engagement you want, you're not gonna see the, the, the results that you're looking for. So it's less about just finding stuff to throw against the wall and more about finding things that are gonna resonate with the people that you are engaged with. Does that make sense? How much yep. time do we have? Perfect. Yeah, we have uh, a few minutes left, I think. We have one last question maybe from Chris. Uh, he's asking, <clears throat> how important is it to post content from your company page versus posting using your individual LinkedIn page? Great question. Um, this is where I will differ from some other LinkedIn experts. I don't want to call myself an expert because I'm not, but I don't think the LinkedIn company pages are worth a whole heap and heck of a lot. I don't think a lot of people follow pages. I don't think a lot of people engage with pages. Again, going back to authenticity and, and being your true self, your, your personal page is your way to get people to gain interest in you, in your yourself, and then ultimately your business. What I like the company pages for is to allow my staff to be able to easily share the corporate approved content to their personal pages. So with one click, they can go to the business page, click share, and our corporate curated content is on their personal page. Um, and the other thing that I will say is that people don't buy from pages, people buy from people. So when you're, posting things to your page give it personality give it life give it the respect it deserves so that people will see your authenticity come through people will want to engage with you and then you can make that a relationship not a post social media everybody thinks that social you put it out there and they will come they're only going to come if they like you so make sure that you are posting things that make you feel good about your products or services and make other people feel good about you. Does that make sense? Any 
last questions? I don't. It's a quiet group. Up, that was, yeah, that was the it's last quiet... one that came through. Okay, so if anybody has any questions or roadblocks, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything, but I am here to answer questions. Um, I'm happy to do that. You know, no cost. We're all we all love the Better Business Bureau, and we are. I'm here to you know help you. Feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a call, and I'm happy to answer your own personal and individual questions. Take a look at your stuff, see what you're doing right, what you're not doing right, and you know, give you my opinion if you want it. <laughs> we always want your opinion, Regina. You are an uh, again, such an amazing person. I personally would call you call you an expert. So, um, up, oh, Clee, is that a question that just popped up? Uh, nope, just a, oh, a no, shout out. No, Jay Block. Bye. Thank you. Um, but Gina, thank you for spending your morning with us. Thank you for giving us the gift of outside the birds, the trees. It was beautiful. So thank you. Just a quick reminder to everybody: we will have this posted on uh, BBB and Clay, where can we find that information plus our upcoming test talks? Yes, yeah, so our website is bbb.org backslash greater hyphen Maryland. And at the top of our homepage, there are programs and services. And we have the COVID resources where you can find all these trust talks and upcoming ones scheduled out. Great, thank you. So we appreciate it. And if anybody has ideas of information you need to find and, and uh, please let us know. We're happy to bring experts again like Gina. And Gina, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye. I had a great time. I hope I provided at least if somebody, if everybody got one tip to take away, then, I, then I'm happy. We got more than that. So thank you again. Wishing thank everybody a continued safe week and uh, enjoy the heat. So take oh, care. Oh, and get air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, guys.